Okay, there you go. That's one uh, one uh, done. What I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to run uh, just two small beads around the edge of this here. I'll sandblast this face off, but I'll just do that much uh, because seeing as how I got that roll pin there, the weakest spot is not going to be any weld. <laughs> it's going to be that roll pin. And I'll run a little wee, uh, weld around here, just a, a light one around there. I'll probably just use a fusion weld. I won't, probably won't use any filler. We'll see how it works. But uh, once again, because that's going to be the weak spot there. But so it's all together. And see how it all comes apart if I had two free hands. But that's the piece that uh, was on the motor originally with that other bit stripped off. Uh, you know, the gear in that, or the sprocket and the clutch. Here's the uh, new sprocket. And I. And yeah, there we go. It's fairly tight on there, but that's good. Doesn't feel like there's any great amount of play. I'll weld that on. I think everything will be nice and concentric. So I'll make another one of these. Well, actually, I'm going to try this out on there before I weld anything together because this would be the time to find out that there's something wrong. But uh, I already wrapped the chain around it, and uh, it looks uh, looks good. I'll see if I can do it again with uh, with one hand here. I'll put it down. And we'll just roll it around it. And as you, you know, find clearance there, but here, you can see that there's decent clearance there as well. So it's not going to be a problem there. How big I turned that uh, back piece down. I actually ended up turning it down to about, what was it? One inch, 430. So, uh, are we good there? So I'm going to try this out on the unit. I'm not obviously going to try and fire it up because that'd be just silliness. But uh, we'll, I'll wrap a piece of chain around it, make sure it looks like it's reasonably straight, or maybe just run a straight edge along it. That's just the easiest way to go. And then I'll move on to the other one. And we'll see how that goes. Okay, there you go. That's the second one. I did make one minor mistake on this one, is that I cut this about 30 thou deeper than that other one. So it's actually will be 30 thou further out of alignment. But I think it's such a trivial, trivial difference that it's actually... Yeah, it's visible, but it's not. I don't think it's going to end up being a big deal for alignment and all that. So I'm not going to worry about that. I was thinking about remaking it. I said, nah, no point. I did figure out one thing, though, uh, that I didn't uh, ever know of or, or think of before. Uh, this second one that I did, uh, this side was the end cut of the bar. And it didn't look like it was flame cut, uh, but it was really, really hard. And uh, and I had a hard time cutting it, hard time drilling through that end. Every f one of the first cuts when I was uh, turning it from uh, this end, you know, out, turning this end out, um, you know, like the it was tearing the hell out of the bit. It was chattering like crazy. Um, and then it would settle into normal stuff. And you can actually see, you may or you may not be able to see, but just probably maybe about 50 thou of the front edge of that looks a slightly different color. I'll see if I can find a better example. Maybe you can't see it, but nevertheless, yeah, maybe you can see it a little better there. I'm not sure what the camera is showing, but there's a there's a definite different color, and that part there is really hard. And uh, flame cutting uh, steel can do that, but it was a very, very neat cut, so I'm not sure exactly what the deal was, why it got so hard. But nevertheless, it's a little uh, wake up for me is to is from now on, I'll make sure I cut, you know, at least a quarter inch off of the end of the bar before I try and use a new, you know, piece of steel. Because I don't want to deal with that, that really, really hard bit there. Because that was uh, tearing up my tools there. And it doesn't, didn't cut very well either. You know, like, uh, you can actually see. I, I didn't cut it very deep. You can still see some of the grooves. Because it just was getting ridiculous. But regardless. Okay, well, I'm going to uh, sandblast the sprockets, and then I'm going to weld them. And I was also thinking about that pin there. I'm hoping I have some roll pins. I actually don't know if I bought a kit of roll pins, because the uh, ones that were in those two uh, units are no longer usable. But uh, um, if, I, if I've got them, I guess these will go together after I weld them. If not, I guess it'll wait until tomorrow, and I'll go down to TSC or Farm Supply or whatever, wherever I end up going, and I'll get a roll pin kit. But uh, I was thinking I could probably uh, use that uh, shaft Loctite in here, which is, uh, I think I've got some of it here. It's specifically for 
affixing thread locker retaining compound. There you go. That's what it's called uh, for uh, keeping that uh, uh, sprocket on there and keeping that pin from being more likely to shear because, uh, well, I don't know. You know. It is a safety feature. Maybe you should just leave it until I know for sure what I'm doing. But uh, nevertheless, this thing is just about ready to go. So I'll weld that stuff up. I have to close this door because I'm going to start to attract all the buggies in here. I had a wasp problem in here earlier today and I had to use my raid because they were crawling out of the wall right here and uh, and all that. I kind of want to leave it open because it's kind of cool out there but it's still pretty warm in the shop. It was a fairly hot day to, today regardless. But it's a Friday night so what's a better night to do something than uh, than uh, wow look at all the bugs. Okay I'm closing the door. <laughs> we'll turn on my bug zapper as well. But uh, regardless, I'll weld that up and, uh, and we'll go from there. We'll see where we go. I might end up just going in, but we'll see. Okay, there you go. That's my uh, two sprockets welded up. Not the best welds of the sprocket to the shaft, but I think it's okay. And the uh, top weld, uh, that was just a fusion weld. They're still radiating a lot of heat. <laughs> so they're freshly uh, welded. I'll disconnect that. Um, so I'm either going to be waiting for... A little while. It's already 10:30. I might just knock off right now, leave this to cool for the morning, and uh, I'll have a quick look to see if I have any roll pins to go in here. If I don't, then I guess I'm heading out into Hanover. But uh, in any case, uh, this thing will actually will be spinning the tires tomorrow, so that's going to be cool. Now, electronics. Still a little ways to go on that. I haven't done anything with that, but uh, we'll see how we go. And I just thought I'd say one last thing before I go. I appreciate all the uh, the views I get. I appreciate every person who watches my videos. But uh, if you think that what I'm doing is retarded and to get back to the truck, I always label my videos so it's really obvious which ones you can avoid if you're not interested in watching them.